welcome to another episode of Open Book Besties. I'm Misty Walker. And I'm Kay Webster. And every single time before we start this, I ask you the name of our program because I never remember. <laughs> and I didn't this time, and I totally said it wrong, so we had to restart. Yep. Which and is why I'm laughing. I know, I know. As soon as you said it, I was like, wait, that's not us. <laughs> right. That's somebody else, not us. <laughs> nice try oh I'm such an idiot that's just my memory I just you've got a bad memory but you know so do I like about strange things you know I mean I can remember our podcast name but you know (laughs) (laughs) I always tell people I have a bad memory and they're like oh yeah me too and I'm like I I don't think you quite understand (laughs) like I forget things three seconds after today I had so many things that I had to do so um and I knew I was going to forget it as I thought of it so I took one of my you know those um labels that you get with your Rolo do you guys use a Rolo I don't know what you use but I use a Rolo for my shipping and sometimes it kicks out these like huge stickers that don't have anything on them so I wrote my list of things that I needed to do and I slapped it on my leggings and I was like (laughs) my husband's like what are you doing and I'm like this is the only way I will remember everything that I have to do (laughs) that is pretty you know extra I know I usually make to-do lists in my notebook and then I close the notebook and I stick it on a shelf and I forget the notebook exists and then six months later I'm like what's this notebook and I'm like oh my god do this one thing six months ago (laughs) which reminds me (laughs) so (laughs) I recently quit working for you and your sister took over (laughs) my duties and so I sent her the link to our drive which our shared drive is just a disaster of all of these ideas that we've had that we have completely (laughs) like given up on it's like where ideas go to die right and your sister (laughs) your sister gets in there and she's like type a you know everything has to be organized and in its place and everything and like yes every there's always a to-do list there's always a natural order of things that have to be done and you have to check them all off or else I don't know what happens if we don't but you know when she's in charge (laughs) it's like (laughs) And she lost her mind when she (laughs) saw that. She did. She was like, (laughs) you were like, there you go, la-di-da. And she was like, Misty. And you were like, I'm in trouble. I feel like I'm in trouble. (laughs) I feel like I was in trouble. She's like, what the hell is this? Yeah. (laughs) Well, today she and I spent the good part of the day. She was sitting right beside me telling me everything that she needs and telling me where it was going to go. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So she was basically like, go find this image that I know you have lost in your little no man's land and put it here because now it's going to have a place and I'm going to make sure it stays there organized. And I'm like, okay. And so, you know, we probably spent hours, you know, cause times 130 books or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. and even she was getting overwhelmed and I'm like, it's it's a lot now you know why me and misty were like yeah yeah and i told her i'm like i've been posting to her facebook like through i just have all the pictures saved on my phone and she's like you didn't have it in one place (laughs) (laughs) listen you're lucky i had them saved on my phone and i wasn't like asking christy for images every day i know i know and you know it, it just goes to show like how you and I are just so much alike in that way. It's like, it's fine. Just whatever we can get, you know, it'd be all right. <laughs> and Holly's like, mm, I don't like this. Well, it, what was funny, you know, Holly's like, I'm tired of seeing these, you know, certain images. Like I want to get in there and I want to get some old ones. And I'm like, okay, well, we never got that far. Okay. <laughs> Leave us alone. <laughs> when you have a backlist like that, you know, covers change and your title images change and so many things change so it's like you have to weed through all of that too and find the the most Mm up-to-date image that you can it's it's hard when you have a backlist like you Mm -hmm. yeah it is it is and it is overwhelming and I try to make little spreadsheets of you know I'm gonna do this and you know update it here and do this and do that and 
it is like a nightmare and you spend more time like spinning your wheels like I don't even know where to start you know and then it's like okay just choose one thing and just go from there you know like the the ugliest thing or the thing that's not working just grab that one first and then go and that kind of brings us into what we were planning on talking about. I know that was like a really good segue. Yeah, How did I know? Do I was that? like, what did this happen? <laughs> so we really are good at just winging it. <laughs> we're good at happy accidents. <laughs> yes, we are. But you know, like there's so many of my books, and you probably are, are getting this way now that you've been doing it for a while, that you know need to be updated. And you know, obviously I'm not that type A personality. Like I put a book out there send it on its merry little way. And then I don't think about that book ever again. Yeah. You know, and so I've got books out there that I wrote the first year back in 2014, back when I barely knew how to do Photoshop, back when, you know, I barely knew how to be an author and, you know, just all these like things that I didn't know how to do. And that's what I launched out into the world. And then since I got better as time went on, I just thought, oh, well, those are old books. Nobody wants to read those books. Mm -hmm. But you know, I got a lot of my readers from my very first books. They liked them. The book was good. Yeah. But maybe now they can't like the readers nowadays aren't getting to them because the style is, you know, old looking and dated or unprofessional or whatever. And the the way I packaged it was just not good for today's market. Right. Cuz so, everything changes so fast. Right. And and I've you know, you know, I've been telling you for like the past year like I'm trying to get past what I want and what the market wants. Mm -hmm. Like I need to figure out what the market wants and that's what I need to do. And it is a, a I'm getting better, but it is a hard pill to swallow when you're like trying to change a cover that you already love. Right. But you know that it could do better if you fit it into what people are used to kind of seeing. And so, you know, like, for instance, you know, like an office romance, you're going to know that the guy is going to be wearing a suit. And if it's dark romance, it's probably a guy in a suit and, you know, looking kind of broody, unless he's like an NC character, then he's going to be tattooed and dangerous yeah. looking. But like, there's like a certain, you know, style that people are used to seeing and while it's fun to just stand out it's not always the best for your business and right you know I, I feel like a lot of people are like yes this is my art and everything like that and they hold on to it but it, it, at the end of the day I mean I like the fact that this is a business for me and mm -hmm. I can provide for my family um, I like that it's something I can do well and I feel successful over. Like, I, I have no qualms about calling this my business. You know, like some people are real weird about, well, I'm an author. They don't want, you know, I'm not trying to make money. I'm just trying to, you know, get my, my stories out into the world. And it's like, well, I want to do that too, but I also want to make money at it. You know? Right. It's a and job. That, I mean, it's a career. It's a job. You, if, it is. if you're going to do it, you might as well do it the right way and make money with it. Right. And so, and so I spent all of this time writing these books and pumping them out and pumping them out and pumping them out. And then was Alana Albertson has a six figure, um, author boot camp type class. And I took it last about this time last year is when I started taking it. And something she said on that was, I don't want to be a front list author anymore. I want to be a backlist author because she was fixing to have a book that now it's like on target and they're like making a movie out of it and just all this stuff. And they were basically like, you can't publish for X, Y, Z number of months or years or whatever. And so she was like, that meant that my backlist had to work for me and make me the, the stream of income that I was used to when I was pumping out these books. And she said, so I had to like completely change my way of thinking and I had to really make my backlist work for me. And I was like, when she said, I want to be a backlist author instead of a frontlist author, I was like, I'm a frontlist author. That's all I do. I churn the books out, churn the books out, churn the books out. And after a while, I 
you know, a lot of people have done this and they just burn out. And that's mm -hmm. really where I was getting. And I'll have you know that when I stopped churning books out and I started focusing on my backlist and my newsletters and really just breathing life into old books, I made more money than when I was churning out the books. So in 2020, I published 23 times. And then in 2021, I published eight. Mm -hmm. And in 2022, I've published two times so far. So if you know me, I, I would have normally by now had eight books published yeah. this year. Easy. So, and already this year is shaping up to be good. So, and it's all because I've taken the time to really focus on my backlist. And also it's kind of freeing. Like I've canceled any projects that I shouldn't have joined um, because it was just too much. And I really just allowed myself some breathing room. And guess what? Like I'm getting some great ideas and not just story ideas, but like marketing ideas and, you know, and it's just, it's been worth it. So. Yeah. I, I want to get to that point. I think I need, I need like another maybe year or two to build up my backlist because I do have some, but I don't have enough to sustain the amount of money that I'm making now. So I think maybe I have about another year or two that I, and actually I haven't even published that much this year. It's been a crazy year. So, um, but you know, like you continually do stuff with your, um, MC books and like, I'm always seeing those out there and, um, that's good. Cause you're like keeping that going, you know, as you're filling in the gaps when you're not publishing or whatever. Um, and I don't know, did, are we allowed to do, um, box sets of those? I've wondered that I'm going to do it. I think so. I think you can, as long as um... I was thinking about putting my three books into a box set because that's another thing that I've been doing this year to boost my backlist is by bundling them into one paperback and people are eating that up. They like those. They like to collect those. And I didn't, just because I don't like to read that way and I don't collect books that way, doesn't mean there's not a whole bunch of people that do. And that was another thing that someone was telling me. And one of these things that I was reading was that you have to think about your books not as your book titles, but as assets. So, you know, this title has several assets under it. So you've got your ebook and you've got your paperback and you've got your hardback. And maybe if you do a large print edition, which I've yet to do, um, maybe you have a special edition, maybe you have audiobook. Right, audiobook, um, just all the, and then if it's in a collection or a, a bundle or whatever. Um, they're, they're all these in German, like if you did in German or French or, you know, like a translation and it's like, there's all these variations of that one book that you can do. And even me who I've been here doing this for eight, eight, almost eight and a half years. It's like, there are still so many books that have just, there's some that just have an ebook. And it's like, why is this one not having a paperback? Um, and I was even going to talk to you about this too, is something that we should do. Um, we put the Briggs Ferry bait with Bossy Mr. Frosty and Adler's Heart in there together, but we should also offer little minis because remember I started doing these little minis of our individual ones too. Mm -hmm. So if anybody just wanted to collect the little minis, um, that's something that I started doing was I write a lot of like short stories and stuff for like projects or whatever. And I offer a lot of freebies on my website that way. Um, but I thought, wouldn't it be cool if it was like in a paperback? But you yeah. know, these books are like, <laughs> like this then. Yeah. I was like, no one wants that. But then I was like, maybe they do. And so I, I've done two now that way and people want them. They think yeah, they're Yeah, and they're a good little add-on for when they're putting a paperback order in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's another thing is that we've been doing. And I think, did you add that on your website too yet? Or you're going to? The little add-on pop-up. Yeah, I I don't really have anything. Well, I, I guess I have one, but yeah. Well, I, 
I even added on another, like what, uh, like I have a, a bunch of feuds and reckless fury. Um, so I put that as an add on and it got a little discount and it's a full, it's a full book and it goes to anything like they could order, you know, hood river rat and get feuds and reckless fury for whatever it says, I yeah. don't remember. but it's like a little add on. And so, um, I added on extra pins and swag packs and people buy all that stuff. Like now they don't even really just buy a book anymore. Nine times out of 10, they will go down and just add on whatever it's, it's like being at the checkout line at, at target. You're like, Oh, I need this. And Oh, I need this gum. Yeah. And Oh, I need these mints. And Oh, I need this chapstick. And you're just adding on these little things at the end because that's just human nature. You know, like not all of us are like Holly and can just, you know, not, you know, buy the stuff at the checkout. Most people are like us and we're like, oh, which kind of goodies are we going to get in there? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's, that's what I strive to do <laughs> very <laughs> soon. I'm going to be you. <laughs> well, and, and you really could, we could, we could take out Adler's part and bossy Mr. Frosty and do that and see yeah. We could still have the collector's bait, but then we could also have the little cutesy. Because originally we were like, oh, they're too small to do individually. But now I'm learning that it's okay. We can do these. So let's do it. And then, then, okay, so I took this one, sh sh one short story out of one of my other books. It was just, I didn't know what to do with it. So I stuck it in the back of another book. And then I was like, no, I'm going to make a little paperback out of this. So I took it out. It's called Time Served. And I put it in... Um, I took it out of wherever it was at and I did its own and it's only like 5,000 words. I mean, it's like nothing. And so I basically had to make the words a little bigger, you know, and yeah. make the margins a little wider or however it is so that it'll kind of give it a few more pages so that it doesn't look just like nothing. And then, um, and then at the end, I lead them into um, a little bad, 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 which it like starts the taboo series and then I put the ebook of time served for free on my website so I'm hoping to like you know like a reader magnet get some people and then I use that as an add-on for anybody yeah. that wants to you know buy paperbacks and it's let me go get it hold on I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them because I think it's really it's just really cute it's little it's bitty good. right it's oops it's this is what it looks like and it's you can see how thin it is yeah so and it's and the i mean the pages aren't that i mean it doesn't look crazy or anything uh -uh. and it is let me tell you it is 29 pages long so <laughs> i mean it's just a teeny tiny little book but it's cute and people like it so it's just another asset to yeah. add to your growing, you know, your, you say, oh, I have 130 books, but that doesn't even touch all of my, you know, omnibus uh, or box set type things like that. They're not even included in all of this, you know? Right. And so there's just so much, so many ways for us to make money with our existing stuff. Right. We just, we just get so caught up and doing the thing and writing the books and doing this and doing that, that we're really not giving ourselves time. And that's what I've been guilty of. Like my whole career is just go, 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 go. But in the past year, I've literally just spent, you know, I've spent a ton of money or not money time. I tried not to spend any money, <laughs> but I spent a lot of time like focusing on all this stuff and researching and, you know, giving myself days of the week to do this, you know? So, yeah, well, I'm glad you're doing it because then when I'm ready, you can just tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I, know, I gotta, <laughs> gotta lead the way. <laughs> yep. But we combined all four of our main Briggs Ferry Bay books and I can't keep that paper back in stock. No, we, we ran out and we had to order more and I just sent you signatures which you'll probably have to send me some signatures too. Um, and yeah, those are pretty. And I like, I can't even advertise it yet because it's like the, we talked about it one time and then, you know. Sold out, yeah. 
And then they're like, and then I have some people like, oh, I, I went and bought it from Misty. And I'm like, well, good, go buy it from her. You know, like whoever's got it, just go, you know, like it's, I, because you had a bunch and then you ran out first, I think. Or did I run out first? I don't know. I didn't have very many. I don't think. Yeah. I ran out first, but then I got more and I ran out of those. <laughs> yeah. So I think I ran out in between those. Yeah. Because I saw you were posting it and I was like, oh, we don't have any. We actually have one, but I, I turned it off on my website. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I have I zero. I have been doing a really good job at keeping my biker books in stock because that was a problem for me for a while. I grossly underestimated the amount of books that I would sell. And I've had a lot of people ask me like, how, how do you build up your paperback sales, you know, and that kind of thing. And I honestly, I sell as many, uh, I sell as many, mm, as much monetarily um, from my paperbacks as I do from my Amazon royalties. And that's, and I just tell them like, you have to market that, you know, everybody's just putting up their Instagram post with their pretty picture and the blurb, like advertising the ebook basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for me, I just made it a priority to do this because it makes so much more money. The profit margin is much bigger. Right. So. Right. And there's so there's so many people they like to collect things they like to show off things and that's mm -hmm. why the paperbacks are really popular and the hardbacks because they can sit on tiktok and show you look at my pretty book and that's just what's popular right now so it's like tap into it and yes there is like you know you're you're gonna have to build up that inventory like i did not build up my entire library overnight like it's taken me years of focusing on different books to try to build it up and i'm all I'm just about at the point where everything is comfortably stocked up, except for when we have a popular run on things like the Brigsbury Bay or um, the Wild and Free. <laughs> Wild and Free, yeah. And so, but even still, I'm I'm catching back up on that. And but you know, and and that's good if if you know, because some people are like, well, I don't want to keep all that stock, and it's like you just have to take from whatever your profit is one of those months, whatever's left over that you're not putting towards your bills and your taxes and all that stuff and say, okay, well this month I'm going to spend $50 on, you know, buying how many ever that'll buy me of these paper bags. And then I'm going to go put it on my website and say, you know, and then only put those as you get them or whatever, or have enough in stock. And then eventually those new orders, that's why you have so many on your shelf because those new orders basically start paying for new books because yeah. they only can buy what you have. And so if you don't have it, they can't buy it. And, you know, so it's- I don't Well, know. and back, you know, years ago, the big thing was you just had a, a Google form and like twice a year you opened it up and did, mm -hmm. you know, you only ordered as many paperbacks is what people ordered and had already paid for and yeah that was like a much safer way of doing it but pay, paying the money to get the add-ons to your website so that you can support people just going there and ordering it is just such a better way of doing things mm -hmm. than yeah. how we used to right and and as you know like when you have like something go viral on TikTok or whatever, it's like those orders just go bam, 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 yeah. bam, 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 you know? And then you have to like turn off your website for that product or whatever, because you run out. And so, but if you don't even have that on your website, because, you know, it, it's almost like you just, you start training them, the readers and stuff to go to your website and to buy those things. And like, I'm telling you, like when people are like, well, I don't know, do people even buy paperbacks, blah, blah, blah. My paperback business is very lucrative mm -hmm. and I have, and it's not just like, I'm trying to find a million readers. I have pretty much a clump of readers that's smallish, but they are repeat customers. And yeah. that's because we have good customer service and we're quick and we don't send them anything that's crappy. Uh, we package it like like it's you know China and and it's like it's got to be protected and you know we give them little goodies and that 
you know, that, that little bit is what has, and you do the same thing. I know you do. And it has those people going, oh my gosh, this is so special. Look at, you know, I feel like I've been treated, you know, and they, they spend, you know, they, they tell her all their friends about it. And then next time that they want to get another book, they remember that and think, well, I had a good, you know, time whenever I went through there and got all that stuff and it came so quick and they like that. And it just, then they get in on the every payday or whatever. And I have, I have some of my readers who every two weeks make purchases yeah. and have been doing it for years. And so it's because they, they like to collect them. They like the products they get. They like the service they get. And obviously they're fine with the prices that I offer, you know, otherwise they wouldn't come. So I just feel like so many people leave that money on the table for their business, you know? Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're doing it all right now, but you're starting to pick up to where you're, you're having to bring in family help to get you to package them some days because it like gets to be too much. And I mean, mm-hmm. I had to hire Holly and my son because, and even still, like I told my mother-in-law, I was like, well, you might be coming over this week because we've got another <laughs> blast of books. And so it's like, but those are all like good, you know, good problems to have. Good problems to have, really good problems to have. That's what I was talking to my husband about today because um, with every book, I lose space on my bookshelves and I, I don't, I don't have any more room. Like I'm getting ready to release Petra Spiker and I don't have room to store paperbacks. So we're like in the process of doing a mad shuffle to like get my office in a better place where it can have more. He's so jealous of your attic. <laughs> oh, he is of the way I have it all. Well, it's like a yeah. warehouse. That's why I, I was telling my I think I was telling my sister or my, I don't know, one of my kids, I said, the next step from this is a warehouse. Like I don't have any more space in my home for these books and, or you you can just move or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Move to a big house. I know. And have like this big giant book warehouse. And then we could have like, we could have like book retreat I could have like little tiny cabins around there and then people yes. could come and stay and we could do like fun events oh my god that would, that would be awesome it'd be so fun we would have like a lot like annual retreats and like you know writer retreats and reader like you know reader f- retreats and Briggs Ferry Bay in club retreats <laughs> <laughs> pretend we're in Briggs Ferry Bay it would be so fun yes except I'd have to fly to Oklahoma a lot I know, I know, but <laughs> once a, once a summer, if I had like a whole like little village of cabins and a big like event center, <laughs> my husband's probably like, what are you planning? <laughs> I dream big, <laughs> <laughs> really big. Uh, speaking of like writer retreats, guess who's coming to stay at my property with me for a few days? For a little writer retreat. Chelsea? Yes. Yes, I guessed it right. Yeah. Well, I knew she was traveling, so I was like, hmm, I wonder if it's her. Yeah, that's good. That's exciting. She's gonna come and stay at the property with me for a few days with her dogs, and I'm gonna bring Dutch with me, and it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. Uh oh. I know. You'll have to take pictures and oh, is it me again? Are we good? Are we good? We're yeah, still we're frozen? Good Just a, well, a yes. minute of frozenness. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we live, live out in the country. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you guys take some pictures and do some um, fun writing things. I, I really want to have, uh, you, you know, I was just thinking about this the other day. Get, get on it. a plane and come here too. <laughs> I can't. I can't leave. I can't leave. leave. Uh, You wouldn't like it out in the wilderness anyway. I would if I could stay inside. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, like Chelsea and I are a little more adventurous. We're going to go like kayaking and hiking. And I mean, I could do a hike. I could do a hike. And I could probably kayak under 
dress but I, mean, I used to go like canoeing and stuff a lot when I was younger like teenage years so it's not like that far-fetched come on it's new year new Christy I know my problem is is <laughs> le- like getting on a plane and leaving yeah that's the hard part so yeah we'll see well we'll take pictures <laughs> I've been, I've been trying new outings like me and, um, Aaron this weekend, we went, yeah. we had a bookish outing. So she's, she is a newbie author. She hasn't published yet, but she does have a pre-order up there. Her name's Aaron Branscombe. If you guys want to look it up, but she is, um, a really cool book friend that lives in town with me. And I, I've always wanted someone that lives in town. That's like a book friend like me, you know? And yeah. so it's fun. Cause she cares about the same things that I care about and we're about the same age and we have so, kids the same age and we just have a lot of like similarities. And so it's really nice to have someone in town that way. So I actually was like, Hey, do we want to do something? Like I was like pushing for like us to go do something. Cause you know, I'm trying to get out of my house more and out of my chair. And so we decided we were going to go to this like used bookstore and it's massive, like humongous. Um, but they had the teeny tiniest little erotic section romance. and dark mm-hmm. romance section. Um, most of it was like a lot of Nora Roberts and just, you know, stuff that like my grandmother would read or whatever. They, there wasn't a lot of stuff that we read we did find a few hem- hidden gems and but they have all kinds of books there and um oh and also I didn't even tell you this but she's very like um assertive and so she went over there and was like do you guys do book signings and they're like yeah and so she got all this information and when she has books we're going to do a book signing together there fun I know, I know it's be fun. so fun and then um then after that we went to Barnes and Noble and of course, that's always fun because it's Barnes and Noble. I mean, right. I could I could live in there. Like, I love that place. And so I bought books there too. So, and we had coffee and I went to Dutch Brothers. You had my favorite coffee, Dutch yeah. Brothers. I did. It was amazing. And I literally took a sip of it and I thought, when can I come back? Like, I, yeah. that's, I literally thought that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to come back soon. Very soon. Very soon. <laughs> Ty and I always say that we're like, where do they hide the crack in this? Because it is so addictive. It's so good. It was so yummy. And, and so, and then after that we had tacos for life and that was yummy too. But anyway, we had a good time and it was nice just to get out and hang out with a book friend and talk, you know, she's also, also, you know, write a writer. So it's like, we're talking about like all the author biz stuff and, marketing and so it's just fun to like talk about and it was fun to walk through Barnes and Noble and not with my kid or my husband and and I, I you know I'd be like oh I read that oh I read that oh I read that and then she'd be like oh yeah that one was good but did you read that one you know and it was just fun to like yeah just, we were nerding out that's awesome <laughs> so so proud of you <laughs> baby steps <laughs> that's the first step maybe like I don't know two years you'll get on a plane yeah we'll see <laughs> we still need to have our writer's retreat because that never happened I know I know COVID but maybe maybe we can do that next year yeah we'll still do it yeah uh it's that time where we need to talk about what books we've read okay do you want to go first sure. <laughs> okay go ahead okay So I just finished a book called Becoming Superwoman by Nicole Lappin. And it was basically 12 steps on how to become superwoman, not superwoman, but a super woman. And basically it's boundaries and telling people no and focusing on what you need to do, what's profitable for you, what makes you happy, what, um, you know, basically I've been reading a lot of like mindfulness type books to just really, I want to enjoy this career. And last year I was at the point where I was not enjoying it. Yeah. Now I'm back to loving it and enjoying all the aspects of it and just, you know, eating it all up. And so I've been reading these books and really just, you know, enjoying that. So she is, she also has audiobooks. 
And so as I was reading that book, I was also listening to her audiobook called Rich Bitch. Mm. And it was all about being rich, I guess. I mean, it was just like a, it was like a financial um, run through for women, you know, and just basically giving us like all the ins and outs that we don't normally get, you know, the men have their own little club and she's like, here's all the information, you know? And so it was really nice to, you know, hear all that. And then um, what else? So I listened to that one. And then as soon as that one ended, I started, um, oh my gosh, let me tell you the name of it. Cause it's so good. It's called work it by Carrie Kirpin. And it's, let me tell you, it says secrets from six or secrets for success from the boldest women in business. Mm -hmm. And so this lady, she, everything she says, she is just like me. Like she's, she's an overachiever and a people pleaser. And she, but she, she wants to say no, but she says yes. And, you know, just all the things, but she's like, super like she's successful she gets out there she does the dang thing but sometimes she does too much of the dang thing you know and she just goes through all of her past things and stuff that's happened to her and I just really I really um resonate with listening to these like high-powered female CEOs that are just like crushing it like I just I just feel like I get so motivated in listening to them like I feel like I'm gonna go take over the world you know and so I'm enjoying that that audiobook really well. And then I found this book and I got this one on one of my little trips to Barnes and Noble and it's called Crushing, Crushing it. it. And it's by Gary V. You can't say his name, Vaynerchuk. And it's how great entrepreneurs build their business and influence and how you can too. So nice. it's pretty good. And he does like a lot of case studies of people that basically have that entrepreneurial spirit, which I totally do. Like I've always had it ever since I was a little kid and they do something about it and they make something of themselves and they go and he talks about all the things that they do. And, and it's just very inspiring and motivating. And anyway, you're on a self-help kick. I am. I am just eating these books up and I bought a bunch while this weekend, like a bunch from Barnes and Noble and a bunch from, um, the half price bookstore and it was just it was amazing so nice what about you uh I was inspired to buy a self-help book <laughs> well not really kind of because it, it's called practicing mindfulness mm -hmm. um because I think maybe like some of my memory issues are because I'm so busy thinking about the next thing the, like I'm not committing this first thing to memory mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to learn to be more mindful and doing what I'm doing in a way where I'm like thinking about what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I don't know we'll see we'll see if it works or if my I'm just brain dead there, there's a very good chance I'm just brain dead hey, but <laughs> my mom is very much into like um mindfulness and what are like self-affirmations and mm -hmm. things like that and like bringing things to fruition because you just think it you know yeah yeah like and manifesting so, yeah manifesting that's what I was looking for um so we're we're trying that uh I have not eyeball read a book in a while the last one I read was animal which is what I was talking about last time we did a show um, by Carduki, and that was so good. I don't know why I waited so long to read her Royal Bastards books, but they, I, I can't wait to read the next one. Um, but, and honestly, like I listened to a lot of audios recently. Like I listened to Girl in the Mist by um, Kristen Ashley, and that was really, really good. Actually, Erin Branscombe, she's the one that told me to read that one. Oh, cool. Um, but I downloaded, okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 audiobooks the last week. And I can't stick with one. 
Really? And I don't know why. It's driving me nuts. I can't tell what you and I are both mood readers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I cannot figure out what I'm in the mood for. I even like switched genres like away from romance. Nothing is just grabbing me. And I know it's not because of the books. The books are all right. fantastic. It's me. Mm -hmm. And I just don't, I don't know if it's because like maybe I'm stressed out or something. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Right. And that's usually yeah. the time that you need to read is when you're stressed out. <laughs> Yeah, to escape it. But for some reason, I think my brain is just so focused on what I'm doing because I have Petra's Biker that's releasing. I Can I just say, it was the easiest book I've ever written and I am so in love with it. I'm so proud of it. I can't wait for it to come out in June. It feels way too far away. I just want it to come out now. Um, but then I have the Biker book for, um, I can't even think of, I can't think, but uh, Crow Scorn comes out in July. And then I have another one, October. And I am just like, it drives me crazy. And this is what, you know, ties back to what we were talking about. Like, go, 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 go. And um, not enjoying the process. And I feel myself like getting that way because I overbooked myself for this section of the year. Yeah. Just because that's the way, you the know, way the projects felt. worked out. But yeah. And at the time I had plenty of time to write them, but you know, time life happens. You. Yeah. I totally and, hear that. You know, disasters happen and I've had quite a few of them this year. So, um, I think maybe that's what it is. I just wish that I could figure it out because audiobooks, they're like, they're my life. Like I live off of those things. My AirPods are never out of my ears unless I'm writing. Right. You know, as I package orders, as I do admin stuff, maybe that's my problem. <laughs> maybe I need to take the AirPods out and focus on what I'm doing. But <laughs> Think. <I don't> know. <laughs> well, I, you know, you could, that, that was part of the reason why I switched over and started reading all of these like nonfiction books, because it was like, I wanted to learn some stuff and I wasn't connecting with any books. I haven't eyeball read like fiction and quite a while and it's just because my brain's not there and that's how we are like our brains cycle through different periods of our lives and we just have to go with it and you know it's that's why I've been reading all these and it's like it's like a, a different part of my brain is being used you know and yeah and so like maybe the I don't know the romance side is just not I'm not feeling it right then and I want to you know learn I'm like in a learning mode so I mean, you might try something that interests you that's that's nonfiction that you could either something about the craft or just in life or general, you know, something general or, you know, about your life. But I mean, I don't know what you would do. I mean, I don't know what you would listen to. Like, I don't know either. Knitting? Like, oh, let's let's learn about some knitting. I already know how to knit. <laughs> <laughs> and I already know how to crochet and I already know how to cross stitch like this is like I think the part where I I think I'm ADHD because you do the exact same thing hyper focus on one project yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah or you could find you know, things we'll that you okay so oh I know what you could do hmm. you could find nonfiction books about you know like fine-tuning your memory I could <laughs> do you have any idea how boring that sounds <laughs> it, <laughs> I listened you know I it doesn't sound boring to me like that kind of stuff is so interesting like to me like like I listened to that um eat the frog audiobook and it was all about like um, procrastination, you know, and mm. I procrastinate really bad. So, but it was like, this is going to be torture, but no, I listened to it and there's an old man talking, but it was interesting to me. Oh, oh, listen to this speaking up before we get away from here. Okay. So one of my favorite audiobooks is the Raven boys by I'm Maggie's to the Raven boys. Piper or whatever that no, no, no. Listen, I can't say her name, but anyway, I loved, I loved it. Okay. And her writing's like beautiful and magic. And the, the narrator, 
I was like, he's really good. Like his voice was very just, you know, like I just, I can still hear that book in my head. So get this fast forward, like a year and a half later, since I listened to that book, we're watching this show on Amazon prime, just minding my own business. I'm watching this dude just talk and talk and talk nothing and he says something in that tone and instantly I said that's the guy that narrated the Raven Boys and Matt was like and I whipped out my phone and sure enough he it's it's on his list of things and I was like what I mean and I've seen this guy he was in Yellowstone I watched him it never clicked and I watched him a couple of episodes in this show Outer Range is what the show is called and I kept seeing him talking and, and it didn't click until he said a word or a phrase that was just the white, the right tone or the way he said it in the Raven boys. Maybe it was a voice he made or whatever yeah. that it clicked in instantly. And I was like, mind blown. So did you picture what he looked like while you were look, listening to the Raven boys? I thought, I thought he sounded, uh, it sounded like an older, like an old man, but no, it wasn't the guy that I imagined. I mean, he's a, he's still an older guy, but like he was very good at like painting the picture of the story and just really yeah. like, you weren't even noticing his, it was just like in, in the back of your mind, his voice, but you were hearing all the characters in their own voices, even though he was the one speaking. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess that's a good narrator, but the way he said it was it just, it, it, I'm telling you, I just, it blew my mind. Yeah, because awesome. a lot of the narrators are actors too. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could remember his name. I mean, I'm not that good at it, but <laughs> it, it was, <laughs> I mean, I, all I know is that he was familiar. Yeah, I just, no, That's I don't crazy. have it. Yeah, so it was Will something, but anyway, he did a good job and I was proud. And he done, he's done a lot of narr- he, Like He also narrated my favorite book that I haven't listened to on audiobook yet and now I got to go do it Alas oh. Babylon by Ma- by Pat Frank oh. you're like I don't know what that is it's not no, romance it's apocalyptic <laughs> stuff but it was it was like written in 1953 or whatever but mm-hmm. anyway I love that book and I've read it like a thousand times and I just realized that he's the narrator on it and I was like oh my god so I really had like a little moment there that's <laughs> awesome yeah. It's funny yes. when the, you can make those connections and it just yeah. blows your mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, our time is up. All right. We, we jibber jabbered and, yeah. um, Flew right through that. we, we were just, we were just talking about like, you know, what we, we realized that a lot of our audience is writers who listen to us. So, you know, if you are a writer and you would like for us to dive into a certain topic, um, feel free to message one of us and, um, or you can message to Holly at assistant to author K Webster at gmail.com and <laughs> she will take notes for us. <laughs> oh, but no, That's for all real, she we, needs is another job. I know, I know. She, she will get so mad at me for that. Um, but she does listen to all of our podcasts. So, Aww. She'll be pumped Holly. Yeah. I wish but, I had a Holly. I know. I say that but, every yeah, time. I know. And and so, you know, if you guys got anything that you want to talk about, we will. We'll dig into it and do our best. Yeah. And comment if you're a reader or an author, because we're trying to figure out who like, our audience is and we really don't know. So if yeah, so it's kind of hard to create like content, you know, if it's more readers then we'll dive into more about the book reading yeah. yeah but if it's if it's more writers then we'll and if it's a blend a perfect blend of both then we'll keep it the way it is and just kind of do a little bit of both so but it would be kind of cool to see I mean we're still yeah. learning leave and, it in the comments and, yes and, and I'll have you know that the girl that did the um work it audiobook she has a podcast And she said, I was sitting in my car with my three kids and I was pulled into the driveway. We didn't get out yet because I was watching my, you know, whatever her podcast thing, waiting for it to hit 1 million listens or something. And I was like, and she's like, and then I said, you guys, I just hit 1 million listens. And then she said her like 13 year old was like, 
you have a million subscribers? And she was like, no, we hit a million listens. And she was like, oh, well, Jojo Siwa has, so, you know, whatever bazillion. And then she was so like, okay. And then, kids. <laughs> yeah. And then the other kid was like, said something just totally. And then the, and then she said the baby threw a cookie at her. And she was like, nothing like your kids to humble you. You know, I had yeah. this great achievement and my kids were like, eh, well, we haven't been there. Like, they're not even, they're not even. And it's so funny because it's like, even this high powered CEO lady, that's just killing it and making, she's a social media guru, like making tons of money and doing all this stuff. She's just a mom like us. And, mm-hmm. you know, and still has the people in her regular everyday life that are like, you know, bringing not down impressed. a yeah, yeah, bring you down a few rungs on your ladder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. All right. Well, we will be back uh, in two weeks. And um, yeah, let us know what you want us to talk about. So we want to talk. Yep. Sounds good. Bye.